Well, I am Farhad Rezaei. I am a senior fellow at the Philos Project in New York. Uh, I, I'm Kurdish, originally from Iran. I've spent a significant part of my my life and my career, professional career, to understand the politics of Iran. I have four books and uh, many scholarly articles. Two of my books are actually uh, uh, co-authored. Uh, many scholarly articles and opinion pieces on Iran's foreign policy, Iran's defense policies, Iran's nuclear and missile programs, and um, Iran's proxy wars and the the, uh, the Islamic Republic's violation of of human rights uh, in Iran. And now I'm living in Ottawa, and I spend uh, my days reading tea leaves in Tehran. First of all, Iran has restrictive uh, practices on uh, freedom of expression, assembly and press. Uh, journalists and activists and political dissidents face censorship. They face arbitrary arrest and detention. Uh, internet access in Iran is restricted. Accessing social media platforms like, like Twitter, for example, like Facebook, is extremely restricted. Iran is one of the world's leading executioners. Uh, for example, in 2023, last year, at least uh, 499 people, including women and children, were executed by the Islamic Republic. Um, well, the regime in Iran applies death penalty for a wide range of crimes, but also uh, for political activists and journalists by hanging them uh, <clears throat> and also public executions. So uh, the uh, treatment of ethnic and religious minorities and also sexual minorities is, is really horrible in Iran. Kurds, Arabs, Baluchis, and also Baha'is, Christians, women, and other gender minorities, they all face discriminations and violence imposed on them by the Islamic uh, regime in Iran. There is no freedom of worship. These people, which I just mentioned, live with, with constant fear of, uh, uh, of violence. Women in Iran, as you may know, face legal and social discriminations, laws regarding marriage, divorce, uh, and also dress codes are extremely restrictive. Women are subject to harassment. They are subject to arrest, torture, and rape. And, and, and imprisonment. So the government enforces strict Sharia laws on, on women, and that basically means zero rights for women. There is no religious freedom in the country. And uh, also conversion from Islam to another religion is prohibited, and that can be basically punishable by death. Non-Muslims and also Sunni Muslims they face persecution. So overall, the human rights environment in Iran is repressive and the government imposes tight control over political and social life of people. I have personally experienced some of some of what I have mentioned because, because I'm coming from the Kurdish part of Iran, as I mentioned. I was doing my doctorate in Malaysia, in University of Malaysia. I worked on Iran's nuclear program as my doctoral thesis. And uh, when I graduated, I was, I was trying to find a job and I ended up in Turkey. I got a postdoc fellowship, a short-term postdoc fellowship in one of the Turkish universities, the Sakarya University. And um, after that, I started to work with a, with a, center that set to be a research center, but then I, I, I found that uh, it's, it's not a re research center, as we know in the West, not a think tank. Uh, uh, then I, uh, then there was a pressure from, from the government to fire me, and then I, I, I was started to be persecuted by the Turkish security services, and then I, I was interrogated for a couple of months and then I understood that they are trying to develop a case against me to expel me back to, to Iran. So the reason for this pressure was that the Iranian government 
uh, uh, we're talking about the time that the Iranian and, and Turks were in conflict in Syria, and then in a certain time they wanted to, you know, solve their problems and normalize that relationship. So at this time, the Iranian regime apparently uh, <clears throat> uh, wanted the Turkish government to expel me back to Iran. So I understood that this this whole story of interrogation things is just to, de to develop a case against me to expel me back to Iran. Then, fortunately, I was lucky and I had friends in the United States, in Canada. They saved my life. They uh, facilitated my coming to Canada. When I came to Canada, I started to teach at York University as a visiting professor. I was teaching uh, political science courses. And then I joined uh, this center, Philo's project that I am currently working so that's that's how I ended up in Canada. That's how I, I uh, uh, came to Canada and I started to be a uh, political activist. I write about the, the situation of human rights in Iran, the violation of human rights by the Islamic Republic. I try to raise awareness in the West about the nature of the Islamic Republic, about the situation, the horrible situation that the Iranian people, especially ethnic and religious minorities, are under. Uh, and uh, that's mostly through my writings and uh, my... Right, what I, what I <clears throat> was working on with regards to Iran's nuclear program. For a, for a large part of Iran's nuclear program, a uh, large part of the time that the Islamic Republic has been working on its nuclear program, they claim that this is a peaceful nuclear program. So what I did was to expose their lies by presenting uh, the, the detail of the program, by providing the, the documents that reveal their lies. Uh, for instance, in my book, in my um, Iran's nuclear program book, which was basically my doctoral thesis, I explained and I outlined how the Islamic Republic from its very beginning, from the time that they restarted the program, the program was actually started under the Shah's regime, but then after a short pause, probably a few months, the new regime restarted the program and from its very beginning, they had nuclear weapon in their mind. And in that book, and some of my other scholarly articles uh, about Iran's nuclear program, I explain how this regime is lying, how it tries to deceive the world by showing a respectable facade of the program, saying that this is a legitimate program, it's for peaceful purposes. But then in reality, they had a secret program and uh, they meant to produce nuclear weapons. So that's, that's how I try to expose their lies by uh, presenting documents indicating that the, the, real, uh, the, the, the real nature of the program is something different. That's what I outlined in my book and again in my scholarly articles and opinion pieces. At Philo's project, I'm mostly, again, all my works are related to Iran. And from the time that I joined Philo's project, um, I have been working on certain things. For instance, the persecution of religious minorities in Iran, especially Christian minorities in Iran and in the region. 